Welcome to the Genealogy Gems Podcast, providing quick and innovative ways to make the absolute most out of your research time and creative ideas for sharing and displaying your family history. I'm your host, Lisa Louise Cook. Hello and welcome. You're listening to episode 35 of the Genealogy Gems Podcast. You know, I've been thinking a lot lately about that word podcast, and I'm wondering if it's maybe still a little too confusing for folks. With the new year fast approaching and there's lots of conferences I'm going to be attending, now I've been thinking about the possibility of of changing the name. Like, should it be Genealogy Gems Show or Genealogy Gems just by itself? I don't know. I invite you to read my most recent blog on the Genealogy Gems News blog. It's called What's in a Name? And I hope you'll chime in with your thoughts. I've got a poll question there for you that you can take and um, give me your input. So far, podcast is winning. And it's good to know that you guys um, like the name and, and it seems to be working so far. So I'd love to have your input on that. And remember, the new blog is available through an RSS feed. So just click the Google icon when you get there and you can add it straight to your iGoogle homepage or to your favorite um, newsfeed reader. Well, we had a very nice and peaceful Thanksgiving here at the Cook household. My youngest daughter, Hannah, had a very successful surgery to repair her broken nose. <laughs> Nothing breaks a nose quicker than a softball traveling 90 miles an hour. Uh, that's for sure. But she's doing really well, and she's being a real trooper about it. I'm very impressed. I don't think I would have been as um, <laughs> reasonable as, as she has been about it. And we got a chance to sit down and watch the two videos that I bought on eBay that listener Linda Kvist from Sweden told us about. And Linda, I hope I pronounced your last name correctly. I, you know, I actually did some Google searches trying to figure out pronunciation um, of Swedish words to, to be able to say that properly. But um, anyway, Linda is in Sweden. She told us about the movies, The Immigrants and The New Land. And they were adapted from Wilhelm Moberg's novels about the lives of 19th century immigrants to America. Max von Sydow played Carl Oscar, and Liv Ullman, um, who I'm sure those around the world know, um, played his wife, Christina. The movies were made in the 1970s, and though they had a lot of material to cover, since there were four novels originally, they stayed very faithful to the books, which I always like. They were really well done, and they have stood the test of time, that's for sure. The movies made me just that much more aware of how truly courageous our immigrant ancestors were to have attempted the journey at all. It was truly amazing. Well, have you joined the social networking craze that's taken the internet by storm? I've taken the plunge, and I now have a profile on Facebook, which is one of the most popular social networking sites with over 55 million users. I know that Facebook is hugely popular among young people, but as with most websites, Facebook can certainly be utilized and customized to meet the need of adults, and certainly genealogists fit in there. If you'd like to visit my Facebook profile, go to facebook.com and search for Lisa at Genealogy Gems, which is my username. You'll need to sign up, but there's nothing more than your name, email, and birth date uh, that they require, which I think they ask for the birth date so they have an idea of what the average age of their users is. No credit cards, and you don't have to do anything with your profile if you don't want to, but it gives you access to um, take a look at, at the Lisa at Genealogy Gems profile if you'd like to. And since Facebook is a social networking site, you can connect with people by becoming friends. So when you find Lisa at Genealogy Gems, just send me a friend request and let me know that you're a listener, and I'll add you as a friend so that you can see my entire profile. I'm already friends with several of you, and I really enjoy seeing what you're up to. You know, one of the fun things that I have on there is the Genealogy Gems quiz, which you'll find at the top of the box called Mini Feed. It's, it's a lot like an iGoogle page uh, in terms of the different boxes that you find there on the profile. And under mini feed, as I say, you're going to find the Genealogy Gems quiz. It's your chance to test your podcast listening skills. For instance, here's one of the questions. You heard portions of Raymond Cook's autobiography in the podcast. What town in England was he from? 
Hmm, do you remember? Were you listening? <laughs> well, this little quiz was really fun to create, and you know what? Anyone can make one. In fact, since Facebook is so popular, there are lots and lots of programmers out there creating all kinds of fun applications that you can add to your Facebook profile. Um, much like, as I say, you could add Google gadgets to your iGoogle homepage. It's, it's very similar. And speaking of quizzes, if you enjoy quizzes that test your knowledge or you find yourself glued to the game show network on TV all the time, then you might also enjoy some of the genealogy quizzes that I found at funtrivia.com. So go to the episode 35 show notes, and um, I'll have some links there for you to check those out. They're a lot of fun. See how you do. And now for an editorial correction. In episode 34, I mistakenly attributed the Sweet Memories candy bars to Barbara Murphy, but they were actually created by Beverly Shaw. Somehow I managed to merge their emails together and they melded into one. <laughs> so my sincere apologies to Beverly for my error. And if you would like to see her lovely Sweet Memory candy bars that she used as favors at a recent family reunion, which was just a terrific idea... Uh, just check out the episode 34 show notes, and you'll find them right below the episode 35 show notes at the website. And finally, Yahoo! There is a genealogy gal on the Genealogy Gems listeners page. Beth Green answered my call on episode 30, and she emailed a Simpsonized version of herself. So go check it out at genealogygems.tv slash pages slash listeners dot htm too long i know go to the show notes and you'll find the link there or go to genealogygems.tv and click on the listener button and that will take you directly to the page i've also added a um kind of a little a new little slideshow thing i'm having so much fun with these slideshows i added one to the home page of the website and i've got one on the listener page these were created in Photobucket at photobucket.com, and they are so fun, and there are so many different graphics that you can use. And I couldn't think of a better slideshow to put together than one highlighting the wonderful artistic talents of you listeners. So go to the listener page, and you'll, you'll see there some, uh, a lovely slideshow of the different projects that you've sent me so far. And of course, if you want yours included, just send me a, um, a JPEG or a, a GIF image file, and I would be glad to include it. Tell me a little bit about your project. Okay, well, I think that's everything. So let's get to our first genealogy gem. My youngest daughter and I surprised my middle daughter by cleaning and reorganizing her room the other day. Some girls would have had a fit if you touched their room, but not my daughter. She was absolutely thrilled to come home to the surprise of a clean and organized room. You know, she's a very creative and imaginative gal. And if you need an idea, you can just call on her. But organization is not her strong suit. She fully admits that she has a hard time throwing anything away and making decisions about where to put things is really tough. My youngest daughter and I both kind of have a knack for organization and enjoy a good marathon cleaning every once in a while. You know, we all tend to get comfortable with how we do things and how we keep them, and it can really help to have a fresh set of eyes take a look at what we're doing, make suggestions, and sort of lend a helping hand. We all have strengths and weaknesses, and in our family, we try to sort of fill in the gaps for each other. And you know, it occurs to me that the same is true with genealogy research. One of the really wonderful things about genealogy is the wide variety of areas where there are to work and all the different problem-solving skills that can be used. But like the imaginative teenager who couldn't find a piece of paper to save her life, genealogists have their strengths and their weaknesses. Just look at your local genealogy society and you can see the wide range of talents there are a couple of guys in my local society who are totally into the techie computer stuff. There are gals who love talking to folks and are terrific at interviewing. And there are those who are methodical and teach terrific classes on organization. So here are my top three tips in today's gem for tapping into the strengths of others. 
Number one, swap brick walls. Try swapping brick walls with another researcher and look them over with a fresh pair of eyes. You don't have to be an expert or have a PhD to be able to offer new ideas and perspectives to someone's research. I like to think of it as being a kind of a cold case detective, someone who pulls out an old file and goes over it with a fine tooth comb to see if anything's been missed. Many a cold case has been solved, and with a new resource of DNA, the chances are better than ever. Tip number two, assess your weaknesses. Look honestly at your office and your research and make a list of areas where you could improve. Then set out to find somebody in your local genealogical society who has a strength in that area. I don't know about you, but if someone came up to me and said, hey, I know that you're really good with such and such, and I was wondering if you'd be willing to help me in that area, I'd be honored and I'd be happy to do so. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Genealogists are some of the nicest people that you're ever going to meet, and the real strength of our community is the willingness to help each other. And tip number three, two heads are better than one. Try working alongside a fellow genealogist. A couple of years ago, I introduced a dear friend of mine to family history research, and we scheduled a time each week to meet at my house and research side by side for a couple of hours. I actually moved a second computer into my office so that we each had a workstation and we dug in. Sometimes we'd spend a lot of time chatting and, and sometimes it was very quiet and we were feverishly pursuing leads. But two heads are always better than one. And having someone that you can share the journey with is a wonderful thing. And not having a genealogy society near you is no excuse now that the internet and social networking has exploded. Find a fellow genealogist on Facebook or MySpace by doing a search on the word genealogy. You know, there are over 500 different genealogy groups on Facebook alone. Or try one of the new genealogy social networking sites that have been popping up lately. I'll have a list for you in the show notes for episode 35. So next time, remember, you can get by with a little help from your friends. I think I've mentioned to you before, but it's worth repeating, that the Library of Congress publishes webcasts on a variety of topics. And that's the next gem, the Library of Congress webcast. There are lots of videos of talks presented at the Library of Congress that typically run about 45 minutes. It's our chance to sit in on presentations by acclaimed authors, experts, and historians like never before. They've recently published two new videos or webcasts that are definitely worth noting. The first is Jewish Washington, Scrapbook of an American Community. It's presented by Laura Cohen Applebaum and Wendy Terman of the Jewish Historical Society of Greater Washington. They discuss the history of the Jewish community in Washington, D.C., and include images from their new book, Jewish Washington, Scrapbook of an American Community. On the website, the presentation is described as follows. The collections of the Jewish Historical Society of Greater Washington used to illustrate the book trace the history of the Jewish community from the mid-19th century through the present day. The personal and family papers, organizational and business records, congregational and synagogue archives, historical photographs, oral histories, and ritual objects document the unique local, national, and international life of American Jews in and around Washington, D.C. The second webcast I want to tell you about today is called Libraries Map Treasures Are Highlighted in Cartographia a book by the speaker Vincent Verga. The video description explains that maps are a visual record of human endeavor. Each with a tale to tell in their various forms, maps are models of time, diaries of political maneuverings, and works of art that provide a unique vision of how the world evolved. Vincent Verga and co-author Ron Grimm discuss their book, Cartographia. Comprising more than 250 maps, Cartographia celebrates the work of those who have charted the world from the dawn of civilization to the present. Vincent Varga is also the author of Eyes of the Nation, A Visual History of the United States. So go to the show notes for episode 35 of the Genealogy Gems podcast, and you will find links to both of these great videos. I'm 
calling our next gem, Genealogy Through the Looking Glass. The other day, my youngest daughter was studying for her high school biology class, and the subject was cell membranes, diffusion, and cell transport, which to her felt as relevant and clear as studying Latin or the feeding habits of the predatory Hawaiian caterpillar. The high school biology book that she had to work from wasn't helping matters much. It approached the topic at a fairly high level in a pretty dry way, and it felt to her as if she had been airlifted into the world of cells with no real background or understanding of the big picture so that she could really grasp it. Well, I was very sympathetic because the sciences were never high on my interest list, and I barely scraped by in high school biology. So as we sat there staring at the text, you know, we felt like children trying to read a grown-up book. So we decided to approach the topic as children would, and off to the library we went. Not to the nonfiction science section, but to the juvenile section of the library. There we found a half a dozen books or so that clearly laid out the subject of study with big, colorful, easy-to-understand graphics. And best of all, they introduced us to the subject from square one. Juvenile books are great for laying out the big picture of a subject, and pretty soon we felt that we had a really good grasp on cells. Then back to the high school biology book, which now started to make sense. You know, there's nothing wrong or embarrassing about reading juvenile books. The authors who write them work very hard to make them interesting, easy to understand, and factual. The historical information and the facts and data are all the same. The presentation is just simpler and, frankly, a lot more fun. Now, I've enjoyed using children's books for many years to become acquainted with new and sometimes complex subjects. They are like little gems just waiting to help you take on a new area of genealogical research. For instance, does the subject of DNA still seem a bit foggy to you? Now, hopefully not as much after listening to episode 29 in my conversation with Sorensen Molecular Genealogy Foundation. But I checked out some great children's books that covered the subject of DNA very clearly. The first one was called Genes and DNA by Richard Walker. And another one was DNA is Here to Stay by Fran Balkwell. You know, after a quick read and a review of the pictures, you'll have a much better sense of what's behind all the excitement about DNA And that will help you in regards to genealogy. But would this idea pay off in other areas of our research? Well, sure it would. Let's say you're cruising along in your research and all of a sudden you realize that your ancestors first immigrated to Canada when all along you thought they had come straight to the U.S. Now, I don't know about you, but when I first got involved with genealogy, I had heard a lot about Ellis Island and such, but really next to nothing about Canada or why an immigrant would choose Canada as their destination. Well, Susan Hughes' children's book, Coming to Canada, Building a New Life in a New Land, is a great first-timer's introduction to the subject. It's a comprehensive and informative look at how and why people went to Canada and makes the nation's immigration history really come alive. Hughes explains the appeal of Canada to immigrants as well as exploring some of the inhospitable treatment of various ethnic groups that occurred. Or let's say you finally got a family line over the pond and discovered that they were Irish and that they immigrated due to the potato famine. You might want to check out Jeremy Thornton's book, The Irish Potato Famine, Irish Immigrants Come to America, 1845 to 1850, which again provides a great overview. And there's also Feed the Children First, Irish Memories of the Great Hunger, edited by Mary E. Lyons. Juvenile books can also be a great quick resource for the history of states and countries that you're maybe unfamiliar with and have just discovered that your ancestors spent time there. So when you stumble into new territory, try taking a child's eye view and perhaps a child's curiosity as you approach why, the situation, why, 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 you just why, might learn why, something. Why? why do big people say no? Why are their voices so loud? Why don't the witches and bad guys all go? Why does the sky fly a cloud? 
Why, 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 wonder why? Why, 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 wonder why? Why does it have to get dark? Why can't the day always stay? Let's say goodbye to the nighttime goodbye. Let's send the dark time away. Why do fire engines make noise? Why is hot water so hot? Why aren't live babies like my other toys? Why do I wonder a lot? Someday, oh someday, I'll know what to say. Someday, oh someday, I'll not have to say. Why, 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 why? Why, 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 wonder why? Why, 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 why? Why, 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 why? And our final gem today is called Now for a Little Pixie Dust. I was working on a friend's iGoogle homepage. She had listened to a talk that I gave um, about Google, and she'd put together her initial page, but was still not sure that she had done it right or that she had found everything that I had talked about. And so um, she sent it over to me, and I took a look at it and kind of rearranged. And as I was digging around and, and just making sure we had found all the best subjects and, and gadgets for what she's interested in, I found a terrific site. It's called labpixies.com. And it's www.labpixies.com. And yes, I will have that link for you in the show notes. Now, if you are a visual person, you're going to love the Lab Pixies gadgets. Um, it'll be very straightforward for you to go to the site and take a look at it. But I wanted to tell you about a couple of my favorites. Um, number one was Lab Pixies TV. <laughs> it is so cool. I mean, you can very easily just click the Add to Google icon, um, add this gadget to your homepage. And it looks like a really colorful TV set. And you can actually pick, I think there's four or five channels. You can pick from their list the different channels that you want to show. Um, of course, I had to have on their HGTV. And I think they had the Discovery Channel. And, and there were a variety of ones. And, and maybe they don't have a genealogy channel. But I have to tell you, if you're hitting your head against a brick wall in your genealogy research and you get tired, you could flip over to your iGoogle homepage, uh, click the TV button and you're watching literally um, streaming video of one of the channels that you've picked. And it it's just amazing. You just have to check it out. Just do it for fun. Okay. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. And um, a couple of them didn't work. So um, don't get discouraged. If you pick a channel and it doesn't seem to load, just try a different one because you got to look at this. It's really cool. Now they also had Lab Pixies for My Delicious. Um, there was one called Countdown. So let's say that you're going to have a family reunion and you're trying to plan it. Uh, you could actually set up a countdown counter that's on your iGoogle homepage that's counting down the days and the hours and the seconds that you have to prepare for your family reunion. Um, they have one for Babylon Translation Box. So if you are working in a foreign country's records, um, boy, that's a nice little quick place to um, do some translation work. You can have that on your iGoogle page. And, of course, these were just colorful and, and adorable. One of them was Lab Pixie's clock. Um, Google offers you a, kind of a basic clock that you can add when you first set up your iGoogle homepage. But i got to tell you, the Lab Click Pixies have a couple of really cute clocks. So if you're into design, you could go check those out. They also have the Lab Pixies radio. And uh, one for you techies out there, or maybe even you non-techies out there who kind of want to get up to speed on technical computer issues, they have the Tech Blogs Lab Pixie. 
And that gadget just provides you a feed for a tech blog, kind of giving you, you know, what's new and current, what's coming up in the technical field and the computers. And they also had one, um, Flickr Slides. If by chance you use Flickr and you have some of your photographs up there, you can actually create, I believe, a slideshow that you can then put on your iGoogle homepage. So it's a lot of fun. And um, if you've been just working a little too hard and you're looking for a little fun diversion, try a little pixie dust on your iGoogle homepage. Well, that's it for this edition of the Genealogy Gems podcast. This was episode 35, and I invite you to go to the website at genealogygems.tv. Click on the podcast button and you'll find all the show notes with the links and images and everything that um, goes along with this audio podcast. If you haven't subscribed already, you got to do it. So click on one of the buttons that you find there on the homepage at the website. I would suggest going just through iTunes um, because not only can you subscribe to the Genealogy Gems podcast directly through iTunes, but of course there's a wide range of free podcasts there available to you. Um, totally free of charge, a variety of topics. It's just a wonderland of information. So uh, do that. And I've actually submitted my podcast to the new Zune podcast directory. And if you're not familiar with the Zune, it is Microsoft's version of the iPod. And uh, that one has come out with a new release that now includes podcasts. So I've submitted my feed to them, and hopefully that will be up and running, and I will let you know as soon as that happens. And in case this Christmas Santa brings you a Zoom player, I hear they are really cool. I haven't seen one yet in person, but uh, we will definitely be there in the podcast directory for you to access. And if you want to talk to me, you know how to do it. It's genealogygemspodcast at gmail.com. I love your comments, your suggestions, um, just general feedback, just so I don't feel like I'm talking to myself (laughs) here in the office. Um, But also, I love getting images from you as far as um, the projects that you're working on, if you've made one of the Christmas wreaths, um, if you've put together a family history display, whatever it is, would love to see it, would love to share it with the other listeners. So uh, do contact me at genealogygemspodcast at gmail.com. Also on the website, you will find a link to the the new blog, Genealogy Gems News, which again is available with an RSS feed that could be added to your iGoogle homepage, as well as the free newsletter, the monthly newsletter. It's everything that I can't seem to fit in as I'm talking my head off during the podcast. There's still things that pop up along the way that I want to make sure that you hear about. And that comes to you in a free monthly email newsletter. So uh, again, click on that link on the homepage and it will send you to the right page to send me information to get you signed up for that. Well, it seems like things are getting a little busier as we get into December. And um, I know that our family is going to be putting up our Christmas tree this weekend. Looking forward to that. So I know that your your time is precious too. And I I thank you so much for joining me here at the podcast and hope that you will keep checking in throughout the holidays. We'll have lots of great ideas for you. And um, it's always a pleasure to talk with you. So until next time, have a wonderful week, friend, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.